What's up guys, it's Timmy here and it is an absolutely beautiful day up here in Alaska. In today's video, I wanna do something a little bit different. I want to take the time to answer questions that you guys have been asking for probably a long time that I may or may not have given answers to. I recently made a post asking you guys questions that you would like to know about myself or the truck house or travels or how I make a living, all that kind of stuff, and drop them in the comments. I got an awesome response from you guys and probably five or 600 questions. So I just went through the entire list of questions and picked out the questions that were asked the most and uh, ones that I thought would be good to answer here. So I wrote your questions that you asked down on a couple sheets of paper here and I'm gonna be running through these and, uh, and you guys just might see the question that you asked specifically, so here we go. Question number one, where did you learn carpentry and mechanics from? I would say that answer is pretty simple. I learned them from my dad, learned them from my pops. My dad's been doing carpentry about half his life and he is the one that taught me how to woodwork. I don't consider myself a carpenter, but I did learn a lot from him when I built my cabin up here. I tried to carry that knowledge on into the truck house and on into this new house build. When I was growing up, I did a little bit of carpentry stuff with him, nothing crazy, just some side, tongue and groove siding and stuff like that. And uh, I just recently got into it really. As far as the mechanics, uh, my pops bought me my first car is kind of a old cheap Suzuki Samurai, like the, a cheap version of a Jeep Wrangler and uh, they are known for always breaking down. And the deal was he'd get me my first used car if I maintained it. So that thing was breaking down all the time and I would have to learn how to repair small things on it. I remember one of the first things that happened is the water pump failed on it and he handed me the repair manual because uh, he knew I couldn't afford to go bring it into a, a mechanic to get that done, so. As far as mechanics, for the most part, I've taught myself that over the years, just by reading uh, Haynes manuals on vehicles and when YouTube came out finally, I was researching how to fix vehicles from watching YouTube videos on vehicle repairs. So I've kind of taught myself that over time. And uh, I wouldn't say I'm a mechanic, but I feel fairly competent tinkering around for the most part. Question number two, how do you afford your lifestyle? Here we go. I've been asked this question a whole bunch by you guys and it's kind of a mixture of incomes and a mixture of saving and just a lot of planning. To understand how I afford to live on the road when I want to live on the road, you have to go back to when I started living on the road full time in a Toyota camper. Um, it was 2011 in Anchorage, Alaska. I lived in that for about six years and I would move around to a new place every single night. And I worked a full time job teaching driving for a living at a small company. And I would just go to work during the week and take off on my adventures in the weekends. And that's how I funded the lifestyle for six years. Eventually I sold that Toyota camper and built this cabin down here. And then I built a truck house. And that was just another way for me to continue living part of my life on the road, which I still do to this day. And in all truth and honesty, if it weren't for doing YouTube videos, there's no way I'd be able to afford doing these huge road trips that I do for six months a year or taking off in half of these adventures. Uh, that truck is extremely expensive to drive. It's a big diesel, gets about 12 miles a gallon. And for instance, last year I did a 15,000 mile road trip. And the year before that, I did another 15,000 mile road trip. So it's, it's not cheap, but YouTube has enabled me to have some source of income while I'm on the road, which helps pay for my diesel and just basic living expenses, food and, uh, stuff like that. If you guys look in this video description and kind of scroll down, you'll see that I have a PayPal donation thing. So every now and then I'll get someone that donates to my PayPal, which I put in my diesel funds to continue traveling around. So that's really cool when that happens. And I genuinely appreciate that kind of support. It's really awesome. And it really does keep me on the road doing stuff and filming for you guys. I also have a Patreon account, but I don't really do too much to it because I spend so much time filming as is. I just don't have time to make extra content on top of that. So teaching driving for a living, I still do that. I've been doing that a super long time, almost a couple decades now. And that job doesn't have any benefits. There's no retirement, there's no healthcare, there's nothing like that. But it does have one massive benefit and that's the most important benefit to me and that's time. That job allows me to travel basically when I want to, as long as I work it out with them and take time off to build my cabin or take time to go do road trips or visit family. And that's super important to me. That's the most important thing in my life to me. So just having time to spend how I want it with the people I love and the places I want to be. So 
that's, that's super important. And I'm extremely grateful to have that job and have a job that is flexible enough to allow me to still do YouTube. So essentially that's how I make my living, just splitting my time in between teaching driving and doing YouTube. Question number three, have you seen Bigfoot? <laughs> there were so many of you guys asking about Bigfoot. So I'll keep this short and sweet. I have seen Bigfoot and it was out in Denali National Park and that was back in probably 2007, 2008. It was the middle of the day. I was on a rafting trip. I was a guide, a raft guide, and there were three rafts. We're floating down this really shallow creek that's draining into a big river and getting stuck a whole bunch in the rafts. It was a Boy Scout trip and there was three of us guides and us three raft guides reported in the rafts around the log jam. And all of a sudden this quarrel broke out between the Boy Scouts and that got everyone's attention. For some reason, I wasn't paying attention to that. And I was looking downstream and about a hundred feet away in the middle of the day, blue sky like this, I saw what I'm pretty sure was Bigfoot walking across the stream big swinging arms, pretty fast, probably like a seven, eight mile an hour stride. And it was absolutely not a bear. I don't know what it was. And uh, it was the middle of the day. It was like 12 in the afternoon, super crazy. And my mouth just dropped open wide because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I watched it for five seconds and it disappeared off into the woods. And by the time I thought to even tell anyone else, it was gone. So it's a pretty crazy experience. So there's my Bigfoot story. How about that? I don't care if you think I'm crazy, I definitely saw something, so there you go. Question number four, what's the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Oh man, that's a, uh, that's a tough one. Honestly, if it's Alaska on a sunny day like this, like a blue sky day, it's basically wherever you are at that moment. This is the most beautiful place I've ever been in my life, hands down, especially when it's sunny, when you can see like this and, uh, just, just, uh, it's just a really special place. And there's a lot of special places to visit up here. So I'd say Alaska in general is the most beautiful place I've ever visited. And uh, yeah, that's why I live here. Question number five, are you traveling in the truck camper full time? I guess the direct answer to that is no. I'm not living in the truck house full time. It's a part time thing, I guess I'd say, because for the most part I'm working during the week and then I'll take the weekends off to go film or go adventure or capture content and just get out of the daily grind. I did full time for six years in that Toyota camper, like I was saying in Anchorage, and that was awesome. I just moved around to a new spot every night. And while I did that, I was saving money to build a cabin here in my hometown. And once I built that cabin, I built the truck house so we could still go out and venture part-time. But I do live part of the year full-time in the camper, if that makes any sense. I've done two different road trips the last couple years and both those road trips were about half of a year long. So I guess you can count that as full-time while I'm on the road doing that. So there's your answer. Question number six, do you envision yourself settling down and starting a family one day? That's a tricky one. Uh, I am not opposed to having kids. I love kids, actually. They're great and I have a lot of fun with them. And at the same time, I don't have a really strong desire to have kids. I don't feel like there's something inside me that's uh, telling me I'm missing out by not having kids. So I guess uh, I'm just content as is and I'd be content either way. So here's my answer to that. Question number seven. Would you consider doing adventure tours or paid experiences with the truck camper? I've thought about this a bunch. I know there's a lot of other YouTubers out there that do these uh, kind of package deals for subscribers where a subscriber can go on the trip with the YouTuber and you all hang out as a group and it's a whole thing. And uh, I haven't really thought about doing those mainly because I'm just busy out doing my own thing all the time. I will say that I planned a meetup one time and it was in Moab, Utah and I found the land to have it on and the camping area and everything and talked to the owner and got it all worked out. And it was going to be a meetup of people that built their own truck camper. And I was really excited about it. And when it was about two months away from the event, right before I left Alaska to start my road trip drive, I just realized that the gathering was becoming too much about people wanting to see me and not about people that built their own things coming together and hanging out. And I didn't really like that feeling too much. I didn't want the event to be about me. I wanted it to be about people that built their own campers coming together to hang out. I wound up canceling that event because yeah, it just got a little weird and I haven't thought about doing one ever since. Uh, maybe one day, but no plans at the moment. Maybe one day, but no plans to host adventure tours or anything like that at the moment. 
Question number eight. Do you ever get lonely? Do you have a girlfriend or wife? What's dating like in Alaska? This is a tricky one because a lot of my life is public and you guys see it. And I don't want everything to be public in my life. I wanna have some privacy and have things that only I know. So that's something I've chose to keep to myself, whether I'm dating someone or not dating someone. I feel like that's just private information and I wanna keep it to myself. So that's why my relationships and dating life are not on YouTube. It's just, I wanna keep that to myself. And on that same topic, what's dating like in Alaska? It can be interesting if you're a dude because if you're not in Anchorage or Fairbanks, there's not a lot of ladies out there. And if you do find some ladies in a small town, there's not gonna be a lot of choices in personality types and looks and all that stuff. So you get a pretty tight selection. On the other hand, if you're a lady and come up to Alaska, there's dudes everywhere. So you'll be fine. It's a good state to meet a manly man. Question number nine, would you ever consider taking the truck house to Europe? That would be awesome. I haven't even really thought about that. That would be super cool. Uh, I do get comments from Europeans on my YouTube videos all the time and Instagram saying like, oh, that truck wouldn't be legal in my country. So I don't know if you can drive around with a cabin in the back of your truck like you can with an RV overseas. So I'd have to look into that, but it'd be super cool. I know it's not cheap to get your vehicle overseas. It costs like $5,000 one way or so. So it'd be expensive, but that would be awesome. I'd love to do that one day. Maybe if YouTube does well enough one day, I'll, I'll do that. Question number 10. Have you considered making and selling truck campers? Yes, I have considered that. And to be honest, I actually started a business and came up with a business plan and business name and even got a business license and I was going to start building them. And uh, then I just realized how much time it took me to build mine. It only took me about a month and a half to two months to design my truck house and then another two months to build it. And uh, I just thought about the time I spent doing that. I was just cranking out 14 hour days and just going crazy on it. And uh, I just don't know if I want to do that for a living. And then I figured when I sold the camper, I'd have to pay like whatever it is, 25% in taxes and all this stuff. And it just, it basically wouldn't be worth my time. I'd rather be out filming videos and enjoying the camper I built than building a camper for someone else, I guess. So that's my answer to that. But maybe one day. Question number 11. What's your biggest life goal for the future? That's a deep one, jeez. Um, honestly, just creating, just creating and inspiring. That's it. I think that's like, that's the most meaningful thing to me in life is just creating art, whether it be video form or, or figuring out a way through a river canyon or over a mountain in a snow machine. It's, it's all art to me. And it's fun creating an experience or creating content, just creating which in turn inspires other people to go out and live their best life. And that means a lot to me. And that's why I do this. That's the driving factor behind this YouTube channel, behind all my social media stuff. It's an awesome feeling to share experiences with people and get them stoked and excited to go live their best life. And I guess that's my biggest life goal for the future at the moment. Question number 12. I got this one so many times. <laughs> where, where do you shower on the road? So this one's actually really easy. Shockingly enough, I do have a shower on my truck camper. You wouldn't know it, but if you look in the right side, the outside of the camper, I've got a little shower awning in a bag. You zip it open and two little arms pop out and it's a privacy curtain. And then you hang a little uh, solar sun shower bag in there. You have to let it heat up or put hot water in it. And you can take a shower that way. But I don't do that because that takes too much time. But what I do is I go to Planet Fitness. It's only $10 a month for a membership and you can take all the hot showers you want all around the country, and that's the best way. Uh, the other way is truck stops. I'll go to truck stops a good bit in the road, and it's usually kind of expensive, like Loves and Pilot truck stops, all that stuff. They're like 15 bucks to take a shower. So the other places you can go are public swimming pools. They always have showers, close friend's house. And then when I'm home, obviously, I have a shower in my cabin, so that also works too. Question number 13, will you ever sell the blueprints to your truck house? I've gotten this question a whole bunch and emailed about it a bunch. And uh, I do have plans that I sketched out. They're not, you know, engineered plans or anything. But uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I'd rather people go through the creative process themselves if they want to build their own camper and think about how they want it and 
pick a vehicle for it and design it to fit around that vehicle. And it's a way better feeling to just build something that you completely created yourself instead of copy someone else's design and then there's just like 2,000 truck houses driving around in the street, you know? I'd rather, I love it when people create stuff. I, I wanna see different stuff on the road, so that's why I don't sell the blueprints to the truck house. And I've had a lot of people actually make an exact replica of it and uh, drive that around, but it's really cool to see that the truck house inspired someone so much to go make an exact replica of it. I mean, that's, that's cool. But it, what I'd really rather see is you create your own camper. I think that's better. It's more fun for you and it's more fun for the world because it's something different. Question number 14, will you ever get a dog? I think I will get a dog one day. If I did, I'd probably try to find a Husky because you know, I'm, I do a lot of winter stuff and it needs to be a pretty resilient dog. And I don't like the hot weather either. So the dog wouldn't have to be in it, but it would be cool to have a dog. It is difficult though. I do a lot of like just festivals and stuff where I'm gone for multiple days traveling and uh, dog makes it more difficult, so. Maybe one day, not opposed to it. Question number 15, how do you have so many friends? Seems like every place you go, people know you. <laughs> um, I guess I just do a lot of different activities. If you guys watch the channel, you know that. And if you do a lot of activities, there's a lot of different types of people in those activities and you meet them and you just get to be friends with them. I've made most of my best friends that way, just doing uh, snow machining and I've got that group of friends or playing music and I've got that group of friends or just being out in the road and going to van life festivals and gatherings like that and you've got that group of friends so yeah you, if you get out and do stuff you meet people and it's great friends are uh friends are awesome and it's really nice to have them everywhere you go and as far as it seeming like people know me everywhere I go that's uh that's the one side of YouTube I don't like that much it's really cool inspiring people to do stuff but sometimes it gets to be a little bit much when I pull up to a gas station and this happens every time I pull up to a gas station <laughs> I don't know why but I'll have like three or four people walk over while I'm filling up gas and sometimes they all walk over at the same time and they're like talking over each other to talk to me and that's that's kind of weird so I don't know about that part I don't enjoy that too much but it is cool when people are inspired and come up and say hi and introduce themselves and stuff. That's cool. So it's just that darn truck camper. People recognize it and I can't hide. So they come say hi. Question number 16. Why don't you talk about politics? I would say because politics separate people and I don't like separating people. You know, I could film myself sitting down and saying, uh, I think this should work this way. And then one person out there might not think it should work that way and there'd be this separation all of a sudden so it's really sad because people can't talk and communicate with each other anymore without uh, getting really upset over stuff it's kind of sad but uh that's why i don't talk about politics i don't like to create separation so there you go question number 17 are you ever scared camping uh i have never been scared scared camping I've been in some weird situations where I've been in camping in cities and had some just crazy people yelling outside the camper and walking around being weird. I've camped in some sketchy places where there's been murders outside of caves and stuff. Probably the most scared I've ever been camping was when someone tried to break into my truck camper when I was sleeping in it. If you guys look back at my videos, you'll see that. You can see the cop car is taking the guy away and it was out in the middle of nowhere and uh, it was three or four in the morning, someone's trying to break in my door and I had my shotgun right beside me in the bed. So I'm like, all right, this guy comes through, like he's gonna get, I'm just gonna have to shoot him. Um, but that's it. It's the only time I've been pretty nervous in my camper. Question number 18, what's your favorite town in Alaska? I'm gonna say McCarthy. If I had to pick one town I love up here, it's McCarthy, Alaska, which is kind of out towards the Valdez area. Probably one of the main reasons is because you can't drive into McCarthy. You have to walk into the town, cross the footbridge about a mile into town. And it's like stepping back into the Old West. It's really cool. I'd say McCarthy is probably the single most beautiful drive in the state. Going from Anchorage to McCarthy is gorgeous. The mountains you drive through. So, so yeah, that's my favorite town. Question number 19. Do you edit your own videos? What camera do you use? And where do you get the ideas for your videos? So, yes, I do edit my own videos. I use Final Cut Pro and a MacBook. Just because Final Cut doesn't cost you much money, you pay 300 bucks once and then you own it for life. And uh, 
I'm just familiar with Max, so that's what I know how to use. The camera that you guys see me film most of my videos with, the one I'm using now, is a Sony a7 IV. I had the a7 III before this, it fell on my camper and smashed it, so I had to replace it with this one. Yeah, this camera I use, if I'm doing action stuff, I use my GoPro, and then my drone is a Mavic Mini 3 Pro, which uh, has some different follow me modes and stuff like that, but 99% of the time, I'm actually flying the drone. So that's what I use for filming, and where do I get my ideas for the videos? Um, it's just stuff I wanna do. I just kinda sit down uh, with a pen and paper sometimes and just write down a whole bunch of places or ideas or things I wanna do. And then when I have time, I just kinda look at my list of stuff I wanna do and just go do it. Every now and then I'll wake up and do something in a whim that day, but most of my stuff I kinda think of ideas I actually want to do. And I don't do it for videos, I do it because it's something that I wanna do and that's what makes it sustainable to me. If I was making videos just to capture content and that was it, then it'd feel like a job and it wouldn't be fulfilling, but it's something I actually wanna do and then I get to create a video on the way. So it keeps it very sustainable and keeps it fun. Question number 21, do you actually save money living on the road? That's a tricky one. I'd say it's a wash because you don't have rent, you don't have a mortgage, you don't have property taxes, you don't have utilities, you're not paying bills. But on the other hand, you're spending a lot more gas money, you're eating out more, you're probably paying more for insurance. So it's kind of a wash, it's kind of right down the middle. But I would say overall, living in a vehicle is cheaper than having a stationary place, just in general. So if you're doing it right, you can save some money. Woo, it's getting cold, the sun just went down. But luckily, we only have a few more questions. Question number 22, what's your inspiration behind the truck house? What is my inspiration? Why? I would say I just, I just wanted something that felt like home. I wanted to be wherever I was in the world and be walking up to my vehicle and be like, hey, here's my house. It's my home, it's my cabin. So that's it, it's that simple. And I couldn't find a way to make it feel more like home than just coming home to a cabin on the back of the truck. I mean, come on now. Literally feels like a cabin when you're inside. I can even sit on my back porch, you know, and have a coffee, you know, in the rain. It's pretty neat. Question number 23. How did you finance the new house build? That's a really simple one. I'm not a trust fund kid or anything like that. I got a construction loan. Like I said, I've been teaching driving almost 20 years now, which sounds insane, but, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I've had that record of working a full-time job for a long time and I get a construction loan and that's how I'm building my house. And my plan is once I finish this new house, which is gonna be my house, I'll be able to rent out the cabin that I built beside it, which will pay for both houses. So then I'll be essentially rent-free, which frees me up to do more of this stuff. All right, guys, final question here. What's your big plans for 2024? Oh, what are the plans? I'd say the number one priority right now is finishing this freaking house. So I've got to finish this house that I started building. The outside is essentially complete and it was just Sam and I that built the whole freaking thing. So just me and my buddy and uh, we got that done. It took about five months and now I've moved on to the inside. I'm working on the plumbing now and uh, I'm hoping to be done in May if all goes well, knock on wood. The second big plan for 2024, because I've been cranking on this house for a year by then, is I wanna go on another big road trip. I wanna take you guys on another big journey, just from Alaska down through Canada and around the lower 48. And I wanna mix it up this time. I wanna go enjoy some of the same stuff, but I also wanna visit a whole bunch of new places, have a bunch of new experiences, and uh, obviously create some content along the way, because I love doing that. So those are the major plans for the year. Well guys, I guess that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different, but I wanted to answer some of those questions that some of you guys have been asking a long time. And uh, I hope that answered at least some of your questions. So we'll see you on the next video. Remember, I do a new video every week. We'll make the next one an adventure one. And uh, we'll see you on it. So until next time, peace, y'all.